If you think about a sporting event, you know, people like me, if the gates open three hours early, I got to be there. And there's other people we all know show up two minutes before the game starts. So you have a trickle in of people. You know, they, they come over a long period of time. But when it's done, everybody jumps in the car and, and tries to escape. And that's what the big fear is with the eclipse. What they're anticipating for Wood County is they're anticipating our population to double. If we get 130,000 people coming into our county, they're going to be going to our grocery stores. They're going to be going to our restaurants. They're going to be going to get gasoline and all the other things that we do every day. And we really want people to look back and say, what goes on in my life on a daily basis? And what could be impacted by a large group of people coming in? Really what the EMA does is we kind of set things up and, and we kind of keep things going. Um, we know a lot of people around the area. We know the different resources that people have, different things that they can bring to the table. So when we look at an event like this, this isn't just gonna be one community event. This is gonna be a national event. So you need folks like us to kind of bring those, those people together. And then at the state, they take people like us and bring us together. So it helps to get a much bigger picture of really what everything's gonna look like. We're lucky uh, with this eclipse because back in 2017, they actually had one that went through a little bit south of us. So I think hopefully a lot of people remember that. We sent a group down to Kentucky um, just to kind of see how things were. It took them five hours to get there, 17 hours to get back. They're the ones that were nice enough to tell us we're gonna run out of food, we're gonna run out of gas. Um, but the positive is we know that. We know that there's gonna be issues with food. We know there's gonna be issues with gas. So hopefully we can get some different things placed in the area that will alleviate that. Everything that we do in the EMA is, is really based on preparedness and the preparedness cycle. One of the first things is, is you want to identify what the risks are going to be, what the hazards are going to be. You know, one of the things is when you bring in a large group of people. Infrastructure, everything we have is based on the number of people that we have. Cell phones, the carriers build about 10 to 25 percent of increase into the system. Doubling the population is more than 25 percent. So we already know that there's going to be issues. So the next step would be is to mitigate. And mitigate is basically like, what can we do to lessen the impact? So people are gonna start getting here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to kind of claim the special area that they want and you know get the, get the best seats. So really think about some of those things. What can we do to keep our local people off the roads that don't necessarily have to be on the roads? You know, gasoline could be in short supply. So before that, try and keep your cars as full as they can. If you've got kids, you know that this one kid will eat a hot dog, the other one won't. So, you know, from the food standpoint, at least have, try and have at least an extra week of food in your home. It's not about restocking the grocery stores in Wood County, it's everybody on the path. So the recovery from us to get back to normal probably is gonna take a few days before the store's shelves get filled up and that. So again, this is where you kind of prepare on the front end to think about this and what your needs are. And, and it, you know, and the better prepared you're gonna be, the, the better off it's gonna be. It's gonna be a much better experience for everybody.